In the depths of Nethys I sit upon my throne, watching the great wheel turn. Every soul, every heartbeat, every fleeting thought is like a delicate note in the symphony of existence. But oh, there is one sensation, one exquisite pleasure that eclipses all others, the corruption of a pure soul. This is how the Chains of Asmodeus kicks off, words from the legendary Asmodeus, the main villain in this adventure. This is an adventure created by Studio Arcanum Worlds and published on the DM Guild by Wizards of the Coast. And there's really been no noise from this thing from Arcanum nor Wizards. For myself, I was perusing the DM Guild and found a brand new supplement that hit bestseller in a matter of days. Now this is curious because that usually doesn't happen without big marketing. Maybe the appetite for a product like this is so large that a DM's guild banner ad was good enough. In any case, miraculous. And people are demanding this to be printed, and with good reason, because it's great. But first, let's talk a little about who developed this and why. Chains of Asmodeus was developed by Arcanum Worlds, a studio that enjoys the talents of some of the folks from old Bioware that develop projects such as Baldur's Gate and Knights of the Old Republic. And this book is for charity. Similar to previous DM's guild titles, this text supports the work of Extra Life. Right, so what's in it? The store page boasts 50 plus high challenge monsters, stat blocks for Asmodeus, 20 plus infernal magic items, new item corruption mechanics, details on all layers of the Nine Hells, with maps created by John Stevenson, and it is an adventure for levels 11 to 20. The text is 285 pages and gives each layer of hell a chapter, complete with stat blocks, NPCs, magical items, and player handouts. The book begins by introducing the Nine Hells and discussing their origins from Dante's Inferno and how sin need to be the center of the Nine Hells adventure. Inferno is a Judeo-Christian work, so the sins discussed here are from that angle. The premise of the story is that Asmodeus has targeted your level 11 PCs. He wants to corrupt them and bend them to his will. When he is unable to do so, he targets the ones they care about the most. Asmodeus comes to the partners, parents, children, or even the PC themselves in their time of need and offers an infernal contract. Aid for payment, and forfeiture of their souls if not paid in full. Asmodeus has no intention of letting these contracts be fulfilled, as each mortal's signatory is targeted for death. Upon their murder, these mortals are banished to the Nine Hells under Asmodeus' thumb. Players have been in a desperate search to recover their loved ones, and now meet the mysterious group patron at Kelimvor's Cathedral. Before the adventure begins, each player decides what soul they'd like to rescue, matching an archetype provided by the adventure. This decision has both narrative and mechanical weight as it will inform where the soul is to be rescued, in addition to providing a mechanical boon to the player once the soul has been recovered. Once recovered, they can also serve as an NPC, providing exposition and roleplay. The players also need to choose a group patron. There are three of them, one for good, one for evil, and another for neutrality. These are the Hell Riders of El Terrell, the Conclave of Halrua, and the Deathstalkers of Baal, headed by the legendary Sarabak. Each group provides some boons and a quest. For instance, the Deathstalkers asks the PCs to get them leverage on Asmodeus by stealing some of his most treasured items, and will exchange soul coins for useful magical items. Their patronage also allows the players to get advantage on attack rolls against creatures that haven't taken a turn yet, and will end the use of the Slayer form. Pretty meaty boons that are sure to be used by players. After the players have met with their patron, they'll eventually gain access to the Nine Hells and travel through each layers via the River Styx. The adventure has a random encounter table for the river where you roll a d6 and add the number of the layer of the hell you're on to get the final result. The encounters on this table are fun, and if you already had a given result, you'll just reference the random encounter table at that given layer. Also, the random encounter chance is 50% per day, which is pretty high. That might be something you'll want to adjust, I certainly will. However, I would probably just go down the table and assign where each of these encounters are going to take place, because I want to run them, and just throw in a random encounter when I feel like it. Each layer of hell gets its own chapter, and has neat adventuring locations for the PC to look for their lost loved ones. The character Ko Tom is the captain of the barge, and will offer some guidance on each layer and where they might locate their loved ones, meaning the PCs will not need to visit every location on a given plane, and where they go will be influenced by which loved one and which group patron the players chose. And after the PCs have trudged their way through the eight layers and made it to the ninth, the home of Asmodeus, they'll need to find a way to break the contracts. This can be achieved in two ways. The first is to travel to a place of learning called the Oasis of Leth. It's here that the PCs can peruse the Infernal Law Library and locate the loopholes for their contracts. Otherwise, the players can confront Asmodeus himself and deal in a more direct approach. If they stab me, I'll be like, yeah, probably deserved it. And throughout the adventure, Asmodeus will attempt to corrupt the PCs, which is his overarching goal. 
When the PCs do give in to corruption, they gain two corruption points. You'll keep track of each PC's corruption points, and that will help inform the final outcome of the adventure. For example, a character with four corruption points is considered corrupt and will be damned to the Nine Hells after they save their loved ones. These temptations can be tantalizing or drastically alter play. For instance, the Liar Temptation awards expertise and deception at the cost of the player now having trouble telling the straight truth. However, the implementation of these temptations can be unclear. While playing, the PCs will come across something that will trigger a specific temptation, an event, or an NPC, and if the character gives in, they will gain a feature or an item. What's unclear is how I should go about this. As an example, one of the first temptations the players may come across is called the Temptation of Betrayal. The PCs will slay a foe called Golgara that has a ring. If the player picks it up, puts it on, it triggers the Nothing Can Touch Me temptation. So the ring itself is the temptation, right? But am I meant to tell the players that looting this will trigger temptation? Once they know what the ring is, what it does, and that it will cost them two corruption points, are they then meant to make a choice for themselves? In my head, corruption should be gained when the PC makes an active choice to give in, not when they randomly loot something. The players are supposed to randomly loot things in this game. It's also easy for the character to become damned, only needing to take part in two temptations to become corrupted. Then again, it's entirely possible I missed something here, so let me know in the comments if I did. I may be a wizard, but my int is astonishingly low. As for the monsters and magical items, they are all interesting and on theme, but not much to write home about. The monsters are certainly powerful, but are fairly standard and will often fall short of their CR. So let's get to final thoughts and ask who is this for and who is it not for. This is not for you if you want a chill game. This is a challenging adventure and it's not suitable for every table. This is not for you if you are a new DM. There's a lot of extra mechanical stuff here that might not be suitable for someone just learning. And this is for you if you enjoy combat heavy games and sort of dungeon crawly games. And this is for you if you only want to spend 30 bucks on a quality adventure. And this is for you if you want to continue your descent into a Vernus campaign. And that's been our spotlight on Chains of Asmodeus. This is a nice surprising quality adventure. I'm definitely going to go and check out what other stuff they offer. In the meantime, the Lord of Asmodeus has a message for you. Thank you for indulging in this dark journey with me, mortals. But fear not, the abyss of knowledge is endless, and the next video promises even greater secrets and mysteries. Will you dare to venture deeper into the realms of the Infernal? Click that enticing link and let your curiosity be your guide until we meet again in the fires.